Hello again and welcome back to my Vela Heavy Bowgun Guide. In this video I'll teach you the tech of Vela Heavy Bowgun starting from beginner stuff and working my way up to difficult tech for experts. I'll start by going over the basic tech, explain the gameplay loop, then mention some advanced tech that doesn't hurt to try out and finish with speedrun tech in the next video for those who want to push their efficiency further. So let's start where we left off at aiming. Something that you might have noticed is that aiming with a stick or d-pad is kinda clunky. Sadly the game doesn't support gyro aim so you can't really do anything about it and just have to deal with the fact that aiming kinda sucks on a basic level. However, this is where quick scoping comes into play because it helps you get rid of the initial stiff feeling of the weapon. Quickscoping is basically a trick that combines the ability to instantly turn around and shoot with the bowgun controls type 1 to also control the height at which you shoot. Essentially, you adjust the camera height to the part you want to aim at in advance, pull the stick towards where you want to shoot, spawn the radical and it will instantly be exactly where you want to aim or at least very close to it. This is why the setting is extremely important, because with bowgun controls type 2 and 3 you start at eye level and have to adjust when you siege. It's a lot of time lost and a lot of annoying adjustment, so it's more important you learn how to quickscope than anything else. You can also do it into a siege and should use it every single time you want to shoot at something. You can also set up the horizontal position of the camera in advance to see where you're aiming with the left stick and not have to blind aim. It also helps to use the target cam to instantly snap the camera to the target, which is my preferred method personally. Just make sure your target cam behavior is set to retain your camera height when using it or else you will mess up your aim. The next important mechanic you should learn is critical distance. Most ammos have damage modifiers based on distance. Pierce, for example, has a multiplier of 1.0 from your character to roughly 2-3 to three rolls away, then a multiplier of 1.5 for another 2 or so rolls from there, then 1.0 again, then 0.8 and finally 0.5 shortly before the shot despawns and you're outside of the range. The distance with a 1.5 multiplier is the one we're aiming for. It's called the critical distance because it amplifies the damage of the shot by 50% similarly to a crit. Although this is not to be confused with actual crits from Affinity because they stack on top of crit distance. You can tell which distance you are at by the color and size of the shots when they hit the monster. At critical distance they will be bright and big, and when you are almost outside of range, they will be small and not as bright. What you want to look out for specifically though is the screen shake. Shots that land at critical distance will cause your screen to shake, so whenever you see that, you are at the right distance. 50% extra damage is a lot, so prioritize critical distance over landing more hits if you have the choice. It will pay off. Keep in mind that different shots have different crit distances and certain shot types have none at all or only imply it to the initial impact like crack or only the raw portion like elemental shots. Since pierce and normal are the most commonly used ammo types on heavy bowgun, you should try to master each of these ammo's crit distances. For pierce specifically, be aware that due to there being multiple ticks, you aren't necessarily in crit distance for every tick, even if you get a screen shake. So try to look for the flashes too on each tick and focus on being in crit distance of the weak spot over other parts. The next thing isn't really much of a mechanic, but rather a necessary feature that isn't really part of the bowgun moveset. I'm talking about combining. Considering the base ammo capacity of most shots isn't nearly enough to last an entire hunt, and Vela is basically a Gatling gun pumping out a whole stack of ammo per minute, you want to bring combines for your main ammos every hand. The most popular and efficient ammo type is Pierce 1, which has 60 shots per stack and can bring up to 60 latchberries and huskberries for combining up to 180 more. You will need to combine on the field, mid-fight and a lot, 
so make sure you know how to combine. But first of all, make sure you even have enough combines. PS1 needs husk berries, which can simply be bought, and latch berries, which have to be farmed at the trader. So make sure you farm a ton of them. And by that I mean use all slots, all lagging apples and regularly check them. Because you're gonna use them up faster than you can farm them otherwise. Most other ammo combines can be bought though, so they're not as much of a problem. Just make sure you have plenty of combined materials to last several hunts. For combining itself, you wanna use the combine list and sort it by craftable or custom order. You can either make a custom order or just sort by combinable and your ammo type should be easy to reach. As a little extra tip, if you start the quest, immediately open the menu and hover over the combines list and you can select it when you combine immediately by just pressing the menu button and A. You can instantly close the menu with the menu button when you're done combining. Also be aware that combined items will move around in your pouch if you used up multiple ammos and recombine them in a different order. This typically isn't much of an issue, but if you're dependent on specific ammo orders, make sure to keep track of where they will be. The combines always appear in the first free slot of the gunner pouch and the first free item pouch slot if the gunner pouch is full. The power reload also has some tech you should probably learn. The power reload has some interesting tech in general, but the one you should probably focus on first is the reload delay. If you hold Vada stance, you can't really time the power reload the same way you would if you just did it normally. In situations where you enter Vada stance and maybe the monster misses you and you're still holding it, you might not want to put your weapon away, draw again and then power reload. You'd think that doing the power reload so late will cause you to do the long reload and try to avoid it, but there's actually a way to get the fast one still. The trick is that the power reload timing actually starts when you let go of Y, not when you press it. So even if you hold Vela stance, you can let go and reload with the same timing as a normal power reload. This way you have the powered up ammo, your weapon is still out and you can start being proactive again. There's one last basic thing you need to know about Vela Heavy Bowgun and it's sort of a big one too. Every weapon in Vela style, with the weapon drawn and Vela active, gets 11 iframes on evades. The base iframes of a regular roll or sidestep is 6, while evasion plus 1 gives 10 and plus 2 gives 12. So having Vela is essentially like having evasion plus 1.5. The reason this is important is because you don't always have the time to Valor dodge attacks and there will be situations where rolling through attacks will be safer or faster or both. In addition, you cannot use Valor stance or hunter arts while in siege mode, so rolling is sometimes the only option left if you're facing a fast attack. You also can't Valor dodge while doing a power run, but you can power slide or roll from it which both have these iframes. In some cases, you may also just roll through an attack because doing so is faster if you want to set up siege afterwards. It also means you don't have to take red damage, which depending on the monster can stack up to the point where you have to heal. It might be worth the risk to just roll instead so you don't take any damage from it. Now to summarize, I'll show you how I hunt a Glavnus real quick to showcase the gameplay loop and put the tag into practice. Before the hunt, I eat for Feline Temper. It's a 5% damage boost and deviation doesn't really matter in this game anyway. For normal, I would eat for Feline Sharpshooter instead. I've already prepared my item set, which contains ammo, ammo combines and generally useful items like flash bombs, potions and capture items. Combine books are not needed when using Mass Combiner, but I bring them anyway in case I get carded while Mass Combiner is active and am forced to combine without them. I draw the weapon and power reload slice 2. 
It's the fastest way to get into Vedder, but other ammos may be better depending on the weapon and monster. In part 4, I will go more into detail about ammos, but for this purpose, slice is fast. I dodge the raw and get into siege position. He doesn't let me do much here, but I will get my chance. I use the power run to get around in search of a good opening. The back is generally the best zone to go for against Gladness, but right now my primary concern is popping his throat, because the fire spit attack is difficult to deal with. Using Valor's iframes, I dodge the second draw to get a few shots in, and using the power run to get behind him lets me set up a siege to fire at his head while he turns around and get his throat popped. I use the opening to get some damage in on his weak spot. Pierce 1 lets me proc weakness exploit on the back, since Pierce goes through the monster. Sadly he immediately heats up his throat again, so I need to find a way to pop it once more. I try to get into crit distance to get a clear shot into his face. Even though I miss a few and not every shot was in crit distance, only a few shots are enough to pop it. I use my last shot to get the topple, so I have no other choice but to combine right now. At least the opening I get from it lets me do it undisturbed. Mass Combiner ensures I always get the maximum of 3 combines, which helps to conserve ammo. I also sorted my combo list by combinable, so I find my PS1 immediately. Notice how I use my rolls and power runs to always stay in crit distance. It's very important to constantly maintain it. Even though he heats up his throat again, I mainly focus on the back now. His heated tail makes him very easy to deal with, since I can simply roll through his tail slams or outrun them. They give me a lot of time to siege at his back. His spites are also easy to roll through and let me set up sieges since he will always go for the side bite if he misses the double bite. This time I get no topple, so I use the next opening to combine. Make sure to always be ready to close the menu in case something happens. Staying alive is more important than finishing a full combine. Since he goes to a different area, I use this opportunity to heal. I would have probably been fine, but being safe is better than being sorry. I use the next ledge to draw and immediately siege while he's eating. Unfortunately, I don't manage to dodge the raw here. The rest of the hunt is just repeating the same steps really. Run circles around him and siege when there's an opportunity. What's important is that I stay at crit distance and aim at his weak spot using quick scoping. I can squeeze a lot of damage into short openings this way. Since I couldn't prevent him from limping away, all that's left for me to do is capture him and end the quest. In the end, I got a decent time of 4.49, which may not be speedrun pace, but is in my opinion a fairly respectable time considering the spawn and him changing areas twice. And this is basically the gameplay loop of Vela Heavy Bowgun. Keep in mind that Vela Heavy Bowgun is pretty difficult to learn and your own gameplay will probably not look anywhere near this good immediately. It might feel clunky and inefficient at first, 
but if you practice these basics, you'll outdamage every Plate Master weapon pretty soon. And that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll cover advanced tech that assumes you're already good at Heavy Bowgun. So, until then, see ya.